I know my video title might have been a little bit clickbaity because I don't actually think that you're stealing if you're using someone's image prompt. Midjourney has created a community for sharing and learning. Looking at using building on someone's prompt is how we learn to create the end results that we're looking for. However, if you're using Midjourney to create images for an end product that you're then going to sell, it does make good business sense to limit the amount of people who can find that prompt. So let's talk about a few ways that you can do that. Okay, so I'm just going to walk you through how people can find your images and find your prompts. We're going to go to the Midjourney website page and we're going to click on Explore on the left hand side and that pulls up the community feed. So here you can see images uh, that other people have created, but how people are going to find your prompt is by the search. They're going to search for images that they want to create. So let's say I wanted to create a cute dog sticker. So this is now going to pull up images that fit that criteria as best as Midjourney can. Sometimes the search isn't the greatest. And then you can click on those images to see the exact prompt that they used and any attributes. So here the prompt was cute dog sniffing around sticker. And they had a style of 750 um, and the style was raw. So not only can I see uh, their picture that they created, it also pulls up some other um, related pictures that you can take a look at. Now let's say I really, really like this one. It's going to be easy to use. This is the, the kind of prompt that I'm looking for. I can see who created that. Now I can click on that person's user ID or username. And now I can go and see every single image right here that they've ever upscaled. Now, if they didn't upscale it, it's not going to show up in the search. But now that I've found their page, not only can I see every image that they've upscaled, I can also see anything that they've ever created so I can and, ha and haven't deleted. So I can click on grids. And now I can see all of these images that weren't upscaled and they won't show up in the search. But I can still get the prompts that they use to create those original images. So you can see, for example, there's not many pictures that they have upscaled here. I would have never found their page or it would be highly unlikely that I would find their page if I hadn't have come across this puppy upscaled. And then that, like I said, that allows me now to see anything else that they've created. So one of the ways to make it harder for people to find the work that you've done is to delete any of your upscaled images. So that's one way that um, that is very helpful. I'll show you how, how you can do that. I think that gets the, the point across. You can see all of these images are ones that have been upscaled. You click on the author. It's going to take you to everything that they've ever created, including the grid. But we're only going to get to that person's page, most likely, through an upscaled image. So the easiest way and probably most known way is when you're subscribing to Midjourney, you can pick the pro plan and that gives you access to stealth mode, which means that your images are not going to show up in that community feed, even if they've been upscaled. Now, if you have the finances to do that, that is probably your best option. If you really want to keep those prompts uh, out of the community feed and out from, you know, away from other people viewing them. As of the recording of this video, it's $48 a month billed for the whole year, 
or $60 a month if you're paying monthly. Um, so that might not be an investment that you, you want to make right now, but if you do have the option for that, that's going to be your quickest, your easiest, the less hassle, and it'll uh, most likely make sure that like nobody's going to be seeing your prompts. The other ways that I'm going to show you if you don't have that money to invest is, like I said, making sure that those upscaled um, images are not are not in your feed. You're going to want to delete them. So I'm just going to walk you through in Discord the things you're going to want to do to limit the amount of people who are seeing your image prompts. If you've watched any getting started with Discord and Midjourney video, the first thing that they normally suggest is direct messaging the Midjourney bot or creating your own private server, which are really simple, easy things that you can do to make sure that your image creations, your renderings are not showing up in in that feed that just goes on and on. Um, it's a better thing to do just for organization and keeping track of the stuff that you're working on and for making it so other people aren't seeing and for ensuring, you know, other people aren't seeing those those image prompts as you're creating them in the moment. When you're first signing up and you're in Discord, um, the newbie feeds look like this, right? So you've got everybody working on all of their images. And the feed just keeps going and going. It's it's crazy like how fast an image that you're creating can get lost in this feed. So you want to see only what you're creating. Uh, one option is to just directly message the bot, which I feel is the simplest, but they're both pretty easy. So you're going to right click on Mid Journey Bot on the left hand side. If you don't see it, look for the little head up at the top, the two heads and it'll say show member list and you're going to right click on mid journey bot and you just want to click on message and that will take you directly to your own personal uh, messages so it's only going to show what you've been working on the other way is to create your own server in discord to do that you're just going to click on this plus over on the left hand side add server create my own most likely you're going to pick for me and my friends then you're going to give the server a name and you'll just click on create. Okay, then you can go back to the Midjourney uh, feed and then you will click on Midjourney bot again, click add to server. Then you can select the server that you created. Cl select continue, authorize, let them know that you're a human. Okay, and then you can start messaging the Midjourney bot with your usual, you know, imagine prompts. So that is the first thing that you want to do to make sure that your images are not coming up with everybody else's and they're not getting lost in that, that big feed that just goes on and on forever. So those are the two basics that you want to have covered. Um, stealth mode is that option, um, regardless of whether or not you're taking advantage of that getting out of the newbie feed and getting into your own direct message or your own private server on discord very important it just makes it so much easier to organize your images as well the next thing that you're going to want to take advantage of like i said is to limit the amount of images that are going to pop up when somebody does a search in that community feed and to do that you want to delete any images that you've upscaled so after you've upscaled it after you've saved it if you're going to save it to use it remove it. Even if it's an image that you've upscaled and then decided not to use it, it is probably a good idea to delete that upscaled version. It just gives somebody another way to access all of the images that you've created. If they see that one, you may not have used it, but it can come up in search. If they like it, they may start to look at all the other things that you've created. So there's only one way to delete the images in your um, bot feed and on the community page feed. You want to highlight over the image that you've created with your mouse. Up in the right hand corner you'll see add reaction. Here you can see frequently used X. If you don't see that here because you haven't used it before, you do want to search for it. So you're going to put colon X colon search and find that red X. Once you click on it, it's now removed. It's removed immediately from the bot uh, server 
uh, or the feed, your direct message feed, it can take 10 to 20 minutes to be removed from the community feed. The other thing that you definitely want to be aware of is Google indexing your mid-journey community page. This should be obvious, but is apparently not. Do not use your business name as your user, as your page name, as your username. And you'd be amazed. I've actually seen some Etsy stores who are using Midjourney to create their products actually title their Midjourney community page with their business name just by searching them in Google. So that is a no-no. Please don't do that. You don't want to make it so easy to give away the products that you are creating, right? This is a business. Let's not make it so easy for the competition, right? Come up with a name that is nothing to do with, with your brand. Okay, so you have deleting any upscaled images. Be mindful of your user page name. The other thing that you can do if you really want to ensure that, that your prompts are not found is delete your grids as well. And I haven't gone that far. I really enjoy looking back at the grids and using that as a library for pulling my prompts in the future to add on, um, to see how I created, to make videos to show you what I've created. I like those prompts. I like the way it's categorized. I haven't gone to that level, but that is definitely an option. Like I said, if you don't upscale, it's much less likely that people are going to find your page in the community but your page is still there and it will have all of your grids that you've created. So you do have the option of in the same way, going to your grids, reacting and deleting it. Again, it does take some time to delete from the community community feed. So there you have it. If you have a business and you want to limit the ability for people to see those prompts, you have a few options. If you found this video helpful, I would love it if you would hit the subscribe button, hit the like button, leave a comment, tell me what other videos you might like to see. It is definitely dopamine inducing and motivates me to want to make other videos for you. I love you. Thank you. Have an awesome day. Bye.